to the eye of Ray French. noticed that um, when I was talking to me I was looking over the shoulder so they took me to St Paul's Hospital in Liverpool so I went there three times and on the third time they had a test where they had to put all wires round me on me and they had put a little gold feather inside my eye and they took photos of inside my eye and they find, found out then um, I've got blind, like, blind spots in the centre of each eye Right, page 75. Stop talking now. Let's look at the picture first. Mm, kind of a breed of dog is that, do you reckon? It's a bulldog, that's right. Does it look as though it's man's best friend? Look at it. Why? Because what? Because of its teeth. Just look at those teeth, yes. That certainly does not Mrs. look like man's best friend. English. Well, right. she helps me a lot. I just couldn't believe it. I'd always wanted a dog. A silky red-haired setter with long, soft brown eyes. Or a cuddly corgi. Or a cute little chihuahua. They're very, very tiny dogs. Or a soft golden Labrador. Or a frisky black and white collie. Or a white woolly poodle. I would have settled for almost any kind of dog. My brother's got the same eye problem as me. Eventually, he managed to get the brute inside. I went swimming in the sea. And, the and I walked day out day far and it was about a mile away from my mum. When I got out, and it took me an hour to find her. I thought um, that she'd gone back to the hotel and didn't know my way to the back to the hotel. White jowls and pale, unfriendly eyes. The monster growled as it caught sight of me, showed a set of sharp teeth like tank traps, and stuck its fat tail in the air. And now I know what you're thinking, Christine," said Dad quickly. "I know it's not what you." His voice tailed off. Horrible, I cried. The newsletter has got bigger and it's got better over the last few issues. There's no doubt about that. There is still criticism of it, though, and I think we've got to take on board all of that. One of the main criticisms is, if you look at your, your last issue, is that it isn't full of hard news. We're getting it a little bit too glitzy, a little bit too like a magazine. So I'll be asking for your comments on that in a minute. What about St Helens itself? Um, but what's well, what going on in the community? Some one of the issues from last year was something about the Shirley Show. Yeah. That yes. should have gone in. Yeah, yeah. yeah but we, we, we thought it about that. Time. Time. Like, when yeah, we were doing the newsletter, it would be coming out in September and, and it was over and done with. And then, then. But, uh, we're going to need something like that about St. Elvis, like something what's happening yeah. there. What about the new road? Was been built it's been done. Well, we've, we've had that article in, so we've done that one. But it's. it's. Well, would anyone like to take that one on, that particular aspect? I don't know. Right, that's great. When to the parachute I should cover jumps. that parachute Sir. jump as well. Oh, yeah, when's the parachute jump? True, we have a parachute jump. Mr. Banks oh. and someone else is and doing a parachute two, jump. And two, yes, oh, I'll oh, tell oh, you the so. people who are doing the jump now, and they're finalised, they've all ordered, ordered the jumps. So it's, it's Miss Yardley, 
Mr. Banks, who celebrated his 40th birthday just before. He won't thank me for saying that. <laughs> and um, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Pierce, my next door neighbour, and because she works for Macron, she can pledge a lot of money, she said. And also two sixth form students, that's Jason Wales and Louise Ann Richardson. Richardson. You're thinking, first of all, of applying to Cambridge to study what? French and Russian. French and Russian again. So, when you apply, I mean, have you got a good idea what kind of grades you're going to be getting here in school? Well, I suppose it'd be... I mean, you know what kind of grades you need? Well, yeah, you need two A's and a B. At least. At least. I've right. got 11 GCSEs. Um, English, English Lit, French, German, Latin, History, Dance, Physics, Biology, Chemistry, Maths. I think that's about it. You should it. be able to get two A's and a B if you continue to work as you're working now. Have you chosen a college? I want to live abroad. That's my ambition, definitely. As a future career, I'd like to do something with languages. Um, with a bit more importance rather than just being an interpreter. Perhaps something more political or perhaps a um, diplomatic service or something. State schools spell Kings receives a considerably larger proportion of applications from state schools and other colleges in Cambridge. And as a result, approximately 75% of undergraduates come from these schools, so I thought that's not too bad. And plus, it doesn't do a step exam. And you don't want to do the step paper? No, that frightens me off. Right, OK. The thing is, what you need to do between now and when you fill out your upper form is you, you really need to find out a, as much as you can about all the different colleges. Yeah. Right. Obviously more than we've, we've, we're at so far. I mean, it, you need to be able to go to an interview with them and for them to ask, well, why have you chosen this college? And for you to be able to answer honestly yeah. without bluster. When you I don't think that there's any members of our family that's ever been to university before. But um, my parents just said so there's no future in St Helens. But from moving about eight or nine, I don't think. stay here. And I don't want to. <laughs> there's just nothing left. Really, there's not much sense in me going through this form yet right. until you've made those choices. And you, you need to get your skates on. All right. Okay. Um, what you've got to remember is that the Oxbridge uh, business is, is a lottery, total lottery, right? One lad uh, wanting to read history, he was turned down because he, first of all, was supposed not to have had enough factual knowledge. Uh, it didn't come over at interview. He was actually a very diffident, quiet character. Uh, and it somehow didn't come out that he'd written a book on the history of the earth when he was a third year, 10,000 words, wasn't it? And also uh, that his viewpoint was too dogmatic, too much uh, looking from a working class point of view, uh, and that the ills of the world are the result of the aristocracy, and not the working class. And they said he was very dogmatic over that, and he couldn't see other sides of things. So. Um, I don't, I mean, they tried to say it wasn't that he was working class, but whether that's true or not, I don't know. That story really happened. We say it was out of her personal experience, something that happened to her, you see. It turned out differently. It's a true incident. But to make the story longer, to make it more interesting, she's kind of added to it a bit. Now, stories that you tell or you write about something that's happened to you are usually good stories because they've happened. Every one of you, whether it's about an animal or it's about you, you've all got a story to tell. Right, go on. Oh, I have a gun and I was shooting in my back garden. And mm. I was shooting and I went up to the top of the garden to shoot from there and I looked and there was a dead bird on the floor and I thought I'd shot it. <laughs> So I dug a hole and I put the bird inside it and I buried it and I was worried all the time and it was a cat claw that was stuck in it. So he took me on his paper round and he climbed up and he looked over the fence and he said, yeah Gav, come and look at this. So I climbed up and this Alsatian crawled from under the car and jumped up and nearly got our Chris. And Mark was like, jumped over my auntie's wall and the dog came up and it was running after him. He ran up the stairs and it just caught his bum. Oh, there you are. Bitten.
And what happened? Well, he was well, crying. I bet he was. Did he have to go to the hospital for yeah. a tetanus injection? I've actually applied to Oxford University to enter into a chemistry degree. The implication was that I would probably not be good enough at this specific time to get into Oxford. But I actually think I'm good enough. You've got to be careful what people tell you. Yeah. Right? If you want to go for Oxford, if that's what you want to do, and I've told you that people have said, if you work hard, you can make the grades. Yeah. Right? Obviously there's a big step between applying and getting an offer. Right? So I mean the grades are, are very much at the bottom of the tree at the moment because you've got you, you will have an interview to get through but we can work on that later. So I mean you're still going, you're going to go for Oxford? I think it's worth a try. Yeah. Right. Well I think it's worth a try as well. Okay, what about your other universities? Um, possibly Swansea. Kings, you missed Imperial Durham. Let's just go through, okay, what we've, we've done. Let's go through us first, what we've done this week, and in particular reference to the improvement from last game. Right, collectively, collectively, as a team, let's control possession. When we score, what we talked about, when they kick off to us, let's make sure that we don't make silly errors from the next play. Let's get it away from the danger area and let's consolidate the score we've just had. Let's put them back down in their half. Now, good start the season last week, right? We know we're in a much tougher game this week. We know we're away from home. We know that we're going to have a hard match. But I say to you again, you're going to be put under pressure. Let's handle it, okay? Let's weather it and let's come forward again, okay? So all I'm going to say to you now, good luck to you all. Best of luck. I'm sure we can do it. Come on! Come on! Come on! Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Stacey. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. I believe your head's uh, He is, yes, yes. Um, the only thing is, he's gone up the motorway and I think he might have problems. Go on, Philip! Chase! Go on, you're in! Chase it! Well, they can the ball, lads! Get him off it! Yes! Good try, Cody! Well done, Cody! Well done, lads! Well done! Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Good half time too. Well done, Kerry. Good half. Well done. Well done. Well in. What's that, Tim? We've got the win, and we don't want to be faffing around in our own 22, our own 30 metre line. For let's push it down there. Apart from that right winger, <coughs> okay, bro, and stay on his outside. Don't let, don't come in on your centre. So the, the simple game is position rugby, right? Position rugby. That is, get it down there. The danger is now to say we've got the elements behind us, we've got the slope behind us, and it's all over. It is not. Got to work. Got to work for 35 again. All right. Let's do it. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, man. Come on man. Oh.
world This world seems bent upon Contemplating Babylon Fate is sealed inside a bomb Word has all the freedom gone There's a place for everyone Don't end up in the car But until the web is spun Everybody must have fun I'm not scared to die, God help me We went to the same schools and we All learned the same rules of lament The knot will never come down Accidents shall mess you not There isn't any word to run The masterpiece is done The world has won Lads, a lot of character there, good win, right? That first half, that first half, you hung in there, you kept in, you got that five points, and you won it in that first half. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. A lot to work on there. We've got all the music we need to practice. We've got a manager who doesn't even want paying, so that's okay. All he wants is expenses and a pint. We can cover that one. The manager is in the radio business, so that's publicity for us as well. Fundamentally, it's a rock band, but a sort of Genesis, Marillion sort of uh, influences. So, I mean, my mate, the drummer who lives just down the road, He's a mad keen on the old Phil Collins bit of drums, so he's he's an excellent drum. <laughs> We, the, we, I, I think that there are three things that can happen. We can either come to a definite decision to uh, go to the parents for a ballot and proceed with the next meeting and proceed with the process. Tonight we, we could throw it out and decide we'll never discuss it again. Or we I've always considered the, the, um, the relationship between her as chairman of the governors and me as head of the school that we've actually uh, worked very well together. And I think that at the end of a, a, a forthright discussion, we'll have some idea of, of where we're heading. There are two methods by, by which a school can become grant maintained. One is because a lot of parents demand it, <coughs> and another is because a governing body decides to ballot the parents. But I mean, whatever way it is, I, I think we have to face the fact that the government is determined to get as many schools opting out as possible, Rita. The politicians of the town are concerned about all the children of St Helens and really what could happen to other schools if one school opted out is a political problem if you like but it does affect children and not just Cowley children and I don't think that as a governing bo body or people from St Helens we can ignore that quite honestly. What are one's motives? for opting out. What are the motives? Is it just greed? We have to be prepared. Is it be to just to grab the financial bribe which the government has been handing out? We have to be prepared and we have to weigh and consider the issue. That is my professional responsibility to, to try to ensure for the staff and for the pupils of Cowley.
Of course, I am concerned about other pupils in St. Helens, but primarily I'm appointed with a responsibility to the Cowley pupils. That sounds dead pretty. Well, we're going to play it out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, same as it always is. Up to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's Jeremy Beadle on that <laughs> show. Uh, oh, it's great glasses, that was. You can take that off. <laughs> that's God punishing you for calling. That's, yeah, that's God punishing Don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> there are parents who are interested in this school being taken out of the authority of a party political education authority, party political council. Uh, that don't really represent the views of the, uh, the borough. I sincerely hope that this governing body is not going to take political sides over this because this is a non-political thing for this governing body. It doesn't matter. I know we're all sides here. Unless somebody can tell me there's something wrong, and I've not seen any reports on the agenda. I'm sorry, can I just I've not it? seen any yeah. reports on the agenda to say that we should be expressing concern at the level of the A-level successes and the GCSE successes. Why are we even considering that there is a need for change? The parents of this school are fed up with politics in the education in this town and what we want is the best deal for the children and the staff who teach them. And I'm certain that that's what the reaction we'll get from the parents. And we owe a duty to them and to the children to see if the best way forward for this school is to opt out. Uh, Wynne and I have done a straw poll of the staff. Oh, good. But, but it is a very, very um, rough thing. Yes. And we've found that basically it is divided three ways. Yeah. That there is a small minority who are very much in favour. There is an equally small minority who are very much against. And the overwhelming majority of the staff simply don't have the information available to make a decision one way or the other. I've not heard anybody turn around and say, gosh, these kids are getting a rough deal. We'd get a better deal if we were going down the, the road of opting out. <laughs> if I heard that in this meeting, I could honestly accept that there was a need to actually go to the trouble of thinking of an alternative way of running this school. I don't honestly believe that there is. I think that, I, think that, I think that, in fact, we should be making a decision tonight that we do not go any further with this. I don't think there is any need whatsoever for us to consider opting out. Isn't it, though, better, let's face it, to be positive about the situation rather than from a negative point of view? I believe I am being, Mike, I believe I am being. I believe right. that the well, LEA's position is quite clear. The LEA is opposed to opting out. It's my duty to yes. present that. But that is a, but we are not actually voting on opting out. No. We're actually considering the issues now yeah, well, of... Can we just vote on it, then? and vote on, on we've had yes so the proposal is that we take no we take no further action and investigate it no further who's in favor of that motion Turn to Cowley High at the same time next week. Boys are the part of life. In our age, it's nothing else except boys. You can't kiss me here because I've got chat lips. <laughs> what do you want, face lager? <laughs> no. <laughs> Give yourself over to absolute pleasure. <laughs> to find out more, Buddy, see you next week at Cowley High. Charlie had a budgie, a budgie he had. It flew in the morning, it flew in the night. Oh, <laughs>